This is our campus Sunday. We're in. We want to go back to the reason why we're here. Camp, uh, Pastor Steve Morell, the founder of uh, our movement, said that we are a future leaders movement. It means that as long as the future leaders are in the campuses, we are going there to reach them out. And hopefully, we're going to make an impact. The thing is, when we say students, youth, young people, kabataan, sometimes we may think about them or think of them as medyo nakakairita, abrasive, kind of arrogant, medyo parang di ko maintindihan minsan. But you know what? All of us here, we've been through that. But I challenge you, let's... Uh, Take the time to look at them as diamonds in the rock, waiting to be found, waiting to be developed, waiting to be discovered. Because deep down in the hearts of students, young people, and I believe all of us here, because at one point we were students, and until now, deep down in your heart is that desire to be significant. Can you say significant? Significance. We want to feel important. And not only that, we want to be great. Greatness and significance, those things are in our hearts. That's why we see young people today do crazy things and at the same time, amazing things. Why? Because of that desire in their hearts to be significant and to be great. The question is, how do we become significant? What is significance, rather? The question is, what is significance? For some of us here, we may think significance is when we become successful, when we achieve a certain sense of a position. But uh, sikat na ako, pag may pera na ako, pag naabot ko na yung pangarap ko. And for some of us, that's our definition of significance. For others, the definition of significance is when you feel belonged. Maybe in your friends, or maybe in your workplace, or when you get acknowledged. Uy, ang galing mo pala. I already have talked to students who, for them, significance is when they meet up to the expectation of their parents. And for some of us here, maybe ganun. Pag na, na, nakita tayo ng boss natin, na-promote tayo, we feel significant already. Or that acceptance, that we want to be part of this group of friends, we want to be part of this company, we want to be part of this uh, group or what have you. And if we get inside there, we get acknowledged and accepted, that's significance. I feel great. For some of us, we feel significant we feel great when we find that person who would love us the most. Yung kahit hindi ka naligo, kahit hindi ka nag-toothbrush, mamahalin ka pa rin. Tino mo yung katabi mo? Naligo yan. No, yung nag-toothbrush yan. Sana. Okay? When we have that love, when we finally found the person who would love us the most at hindi tayo uh, iiwan sa ere, hindi tayo gagawing paasa, Expressive yun? That's for us significance. Yung hindi na ako, hindi na ako paasahin. And for us, we think that's significance. But guess what? The Bible has a different definition of significance. Today, we're going to look at the life of Joseph. Not Jesus' father, or not Jesus' earthly father, but rather the Joseph of the Old Testament. Joseph the dreamer. Sino po sa inyo kilala niya si Joseph the dreamer? That's what we're going to look at today, and hopefully, you would also see what God has to say about significance. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Genesis 37, verses 2 and 5. It says here, These are the generations of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was pastoring the flock with his brothers. He was a boy with, with the sons of Bilhah and Zilpah, his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report to them, to their father. Verse 5, Now Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. Can we bow down our heads and pray? Father, I pray right now that you would speak to all of us here. Let fire come down from heaven and consume us, God. And I pray that we would see what you have to say for us. In Jesus' name, amen. So, looking back at Joseph, he was 17 years old. His great-grandfather is Abraham, the father of our faith. Lolo niya, si Isaac. His dad was Jacob, who eventually became Israel. In short, he's part of a God-believing family already. Now, in the midst of that, even if he's part of a God-believing family, he is also part of a dysfunctional family. Why? Kasi si Jacob played favoritism. 
Don't raise your hands, but who among you here, you have favoritism in your family? You know the effect it has, right? Nakakaroon ng sibling rivalry, nagaaway. And it so happened, Joseph was the 11th of the 12, one of the youngest. So imagine, favorite siya ni Jacob. And because of that, his siblings were mad at him. Naini sila, nagsiselo sila, nagagalit sila. Now to make matters worse, God gave Joseph a dream. And the dream went something like this. There were sheaves who bowed down before one standing sheaves and the, su- and the stars and the moon and the sun bowed down to him. Translation of the dream, lahat kayo luluhod sa akin. Balang araw. Imagine, kung may anak po kayo, sasabihin ng anak nyo. O oh, imagine, mga five years old, ten years old. Mapa! Balang araw, pagsisigbihan nyo ako. <laughs> lahat kayo dito, Okay, ako ang boss nyo. It sounds so arrogant, right? Now, how does this relate to our time right now? Bible-believing, young people, maybe for some of you, for us here, lacking church, parang ganun si Joseph, part of a dysfunctional family, but has a vision, has a dream, but most oftenly misunderstood. Most oftenly, uh, we miscommunicate. But isn't it true that sometimes how we view the young people? They're part of a dysfunctional family. Most of them are part of a dysfunctional family now. Not a perfect family, definitely. Often misunderstood, but definitely has a dream and has a purpose. What can we see from the couple of verses that we read? One thing is this, that God speaks to the next generation. In spite of their uh, seemingly arrogance and sometimes misunderstood behavior, in the midst of that, while Joseph was 17 years old, God spoke to him. God speaks to the next generation. God has a purpose for young people. And that's exactly what Pastor Steve saw when, last, uh, when in 1984 when he came here. Other people were uh, telling him, don't plan a church in New Belt. Walang pera yung mga estudyante doon. Nagrarally doon. It's, uh, it's in the midst of economic crisis. But Pastor Steve knew that God is doing something great in the next generation. God is speaking to the next generation. That's why he went there and planted the church. When we think, when we hear victory, and when we think about victory, we think about the flashy lights, the cold atmosphere, the comfy seats, the pogi pastors. I am, I am offended. Okay. <laughs> okay. But when victory started, it wasn't like that. It was far from it. 100 or so students, college students, and this is a picture of one of the early services back then. Low ceiling, may tubo, sa taas nila, second floor, CR. So imagine nyo habang nag-worship, may tumutulo. Hindi po yun living water. Okay? I don't know what it is, but it's not pleasant, I'm sure. On par sila, mainit. Wala kasing aircon. Okay, kulob. 100 students, not influential, that's where victory started, 1984. But look where we are now. What did they have? Money? No. Influence? Wala. You know what they have? Faith, passion, and a big God. God gave them a vision. Honor God, make disciples. That's why they went outside preaching the gospel. Because that's the only thing that could change a human life. Because we really believe, okay, that discipleship is what Jesus asked us to do. That's what, as young as this is, this is Pastor Jonas, okay, Bernard is doing victory groups in his campus. Imagine that, as young as they were, they were reaching out their campus, going to the campus because we believe that if we change the campus, we change the world. Ever since, that's what we have been doing. What am I trying to say here for all of us here? This message is not just for the students, it's for all of us, that God has put Say a desire to be significant to each and every one of us in our hearts. That desire to be great, it was God. Now, going back to the story of Joseph. So, yung mga kapatid niya, naasar kay Joseph, they thought of killing Joseph. But through the grace and sovereignty of God, instead of killing Joseph, they ended up throwing Joseph to a pit. And then, they Thought of this crazy idea. Bakit hindi nila natin ibenta si Joseph para pagkakitaan pa natin siya? So they sold Joseph to, Ishma, to some Ishmaelites. And, it, it, and to make matters worse, they sold Joseph from the Ishmaelites to the Egyptians, godless people. 
And he happened to be bought by a, an official named Potiphar. So sa Egypt, ang nakabili kay Joseph, si Potiphar, one of those high-ranking officials in Egypt. And it seems like bad things are happening, but in fact, God was setting up Joseph for his destiny. Let me read to you this couple of verses from Genesis 39, verses 2 to 3. It says here, The Lord was with Joseph, and he became a, a, a successful man, and he was in the house of his Egyptian master. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord caused all that he did to succeed in his hands. Next verse, sabi dito, So Joseph found favor in his sight and attended him, and he made him an overseer of his house and put him in charge of all that he had. Kung idodocumentary natin yung buhay ni Joseph, ang ganda. Bad background, bad ano, uh, circumstances, and then his rise to power and success. If God was the director, he's trying to show us what's happening to Joseph. He is about to become successful. But lest we think that it was because of Joseph's perseverance, God put these words in that chapter. The Lord was with Joseph. Mentioned four times in this chapter. It's as if God was saying, Joseph's gonna be great. Pero baka isipin nyo, oh, I should be like Joseph. No, no, no. The, the power there is that the Lord was with Joseph. God is able to make you and me significant, to give us success, to give us favor with men, to give us, uh, uh, to, to make us uh, be acknowledged by the people around us. And that's, what, that's exactly what happened to Joseph. He found favor from the people and he got acknowledged. What am I saying here? That we can have eternal significance if the Lord is with us. You want eternal significance? The Lord has to be with you. Now, granted, maybe for some of you, you're thinking, eh, may kilala nga ako. Hindi Christian. In fact, he or she hates Jesus, but he is successful. And later, I'll go to that. But let me tell you the difference with, with, with uh, man-made significance and God's significance. The ending of man's significance is this, self-glory. Galing ko. Self-righteousness, I'm a self-made man. Kung nagawa ko, kaya nyo rin. And self-pleasure, gusto ko lang maging masaya. The ending was different. But if we have God and His definition of significance, it's not self-glory, it's God's glory. Let's continue with the story. So Joseph found favor with the people. He became excellent in Potiphar's household. Potiphar had a wife. Now, this wife wanted Joseph to commit adultery with her. Every day, she was flirting with Joseph. NLT says, putting pressure upon him. Lie with me. Come with me. Joseph could have said, Oh, sige. Sa lahat ng dinanas ko, I deserve this. But Joseph knew any better. He stood his ground and said, how could I do such a sin against God and against my master? And he fled away. He fled from, from Potiphar's wife. He was standing strong upon his conviction. God has a purpose and a destiny for me. I'm not about to fall into the trap of immorality. So he, he flee. And you know what happened? When he did that, Okay? Pag uwi ni Potiphar, nagsumbong yung asawa ni Potiphar. Binaliktad niya yung storya, storya. He framed jo she framed Joseph. Sabi niya, etong slave na dinala mo, this Joseph, tried to rape me. Now, now, Potiphar was so mad and he had Joseph thrown into prison. Let me ask you this question. Na experience mo na ba na ikaw na yung tumutulong? pero ikaw pa yung napapasama. Na-experience mo na ba, ikaw na yung gumagawa ng tama, pero ikaw pa yung napapahamak. Have you ever experienced obeying God? You know you're obeying God. You're obeying what the Bible says, but even in the midst of it, bad things are happening to you. Have you ever experienced, you're just, you know you're obeying Him, you're standing in His will, and yet things aren't going the way you want them to go. This is what's happening to Joseph. 
The Lord was with him. He was obeying him. He was standing on his uh, sexual purity and integrity and, and uh, your righteousness. And then what happened? He got thrown into prison. Have you ever asked this question? Where is God in your darkest, most depressing time? Nasan ka God? Kung kailang kailangan kita? Joseph have, must have asked those questions. And here, we can see the answer to this. Genesis 39 says here, Where was God when it hurts? It says here, The Lord was with Joseph. Where is God when you are hurting? Where is God when you feel mistreated? When you experience injustice? Where was God when you're depressed? Where was God when you feel dark? He's with you. And what is He doing? Same way what, Joseph, what God is doing in Joseph's life. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him steadfast love and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. The keeper of the prison paid no attention to anything that was in Joseph's charge because the Lord was with him. And whatever he did, the Lord made it succeed. What the enemy meant for bad, God turned it and made it good. What the enemy meant for evil, he turned it around and made it for good. All things work together according to, his, according to his purpose for those who love him. What am I trying to say here? That the God, the Lord who was with Joseph in his success, was also with him in his prison. Na experience mo na ba? Na kung kailan, inaasahan mo yung tao, na akala mo nandun kung kailan kailangan mo siya. Doon pa siya wala. It's so easy right now for young people to fall in love because everyone looks good at such a young age like that. Pero when you, when you start gaining fat, <laughs> when, when we start experiencing, experiencing stress, we, we start having things that doesn't go our way, may magmamahal pa ba? The deepest longing for someone is that someone would love and accept me regardless of how I look like, regardless of how, how I smell, regardless of my past, regardless of what I did. Will someone accept me? It's so easy to fall in love with someone who's there on top, successful. But the challenge is, are they there in your deepest, deepest, darkest times? For the text, it says here, okay, that the Lord was with him. The Lord who was with him in success was also with him in prison. No one else in, else in this world can love you the same way God would love you and me. No one else could show steadfast love. No one else, no one else could be there when you're high and will be there when you're low. The Lord was with him. And in the middle of all those things that's happening in the life of Joseph, you know what God was doing? He was preparing him. Because if there's a promise, then there's a process. If there's a promise, then there's a process. Most of us here, we want the promise, but not the process. The fame and not the faithfulness. But that's not how God works. Especially in our generation, na gusto natin instant. Gusto natin managerial position agad, managerial salary agad. Ayaw natin mag-work from the bottom up. But that's not how God does it. He prepares us. There's a process. When Joseph went through this process, he was being prepared in his character. He was being prepared in his sexual purity. He was being prepared with the way he, he handles his relationships, his faith with God. May proseso po na hindi natin maiiwasan kung gusto natin ma-fulfill yung purposes ni God sa buhay natin. If there is a promise, then there is a process. For some of us here, when we look at videos who seem like it happened overnight, naingit tayo para, wow, overnight success. But what you don't see and what the media doesn't cover and what YouTube doesn't tell you is the process that they went through. They were prepared anytime because they were being prepared every day by the Lord. That's what happened to Joseph. He was thrown into prison. It looks dark, gloomy, but God was preparing him. He's going through the process. 
sexual purity, integrity, faithfulness, leadership, excellence, faith. And then a breakthrough happened. A cupbearer, part, uh, part, part of the Pharaoh's leadership uh, team or council, was in prison. For some reason, Joseph has managed to help the cupbearer. Now, Pharaoh, the, the top uh, official in Egypt, had a dream that no one can interpret. It was so enigmatic that the cupbearer suddenly remembered, Ay, oh, nga pala. May nakatulong sa akin. He connected Joseph with the Pharaoh. And then all of a sudden, as if it's in an instant, Joseph from the pit prison was placed in a position. He suddenly became the second most influential man in Egypt, a prime minister. And his effect made a great impact, not just for him, but for the people around him. Going back to that question, pwede naman maging successful kahit walang God. And let me tell you this, you can become successful even if you don't have God. We all know people like that. We all know people who's richer or who seems, like, who seems to like have it their way even if they don't believe in God. In fact, it's, let me tell you this also, it's easier for you to be accepted in the world if you're not a Christian. Mas madaling tanggapin ka ng mundo kung hindi ka kristyano. And as in this topic, since you, we are able to become great, we, even without God, we are able to come up with organizations and humanitarian efforts, and those are all good. We need more of them. But let me tell you one thing, one thing that makes God's significance different from man's significance. One thing, one word, and it's this word, eternity. Man's significance has no eternal value when the world ends and when you die, it's gone. But if you are part of what God is doing, whatever He's asking you to do, it's big, it's small. But if you, the Lord is with you, it has eternal value. What Joseph did during that time was that, you know what happened? When Joseph rose into position, God allowed his family to be restored. Yung magkakaaway, nagbate. And you know what's even amazing? A whole nation was spared from death because of famine. Egypt got spared, even though they don't believe in God. Ambayt ni Lord, no? And not only that, Israelites got saved. What's the impact of that? Kung hindi po na save ang mga Israelites, wala po tayong Jesus, kasi dun siya galing. At kung walang Jesus, wala po tayo dito. We're still in our sins. You see, what Joseph did, it has an eternal impact. What's the proof? We're talking about him now. Whether it's big or it's small, if the Lord is with you, it has eternal significance. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. That's why we're going to the campuses. In a time where they're dreaming, in a time where God put vision in their hearts, we want to be there and tell them, my process, yeah, let me walk through it. We're going to disciple you because you have a purpose. You are made to make a difference. You are a world changer. There's significance in you. You're going to make an impact. Not, a, not an earthly impact only, but an eternal impact. That's why we're reaching one student at a time. If we reach a student, we reach a family. The campuses is where the major ideologies are being formed, and we want to be there and make an influence because if we change the campus, then we change the world. That is what we're doing right now. And if you are here and you partnered with us or let your students be part of the discipleship journey or if you prayed with us, this is what we are about. We're changing the world. We're making an impact. That's why I want to commend the parents who let their kids or their students, their sons and daughters, go through the discipleship journey. Here's a picture of some of the students who are part of our campus ministry. All of their parents are being discipled. Yung mga magulang nila, nagets nila yung vision of being discipled. Because they got the vision, they let their 
uh, sons and daughters be discipled as well, even to the point of inconvenience. One of them works in Navotas. His son studies in Green Hills. And every Friday, he would send someone to, he would sometimes go to Green Hills, pick him up, bring him here, bring him here to uh, youth service, and then go back to Fairview, pick up his wife, go back there, have dinner every week. Some of the parents of this guy, they allow their schedules to be ruined. Is it inconvenient? Yes. Is it worth it? Yes. Investment yan eh. Next generation yan eh. Mas mahirap kung hindi natin disciple. So you see that parents reaching out to, their, to the students. We also have stories of students reaching out to their families. This is May, the one beside Coach Kat in Banana Republic. Okay, she was reached out in the campus, PUP San Juan. She got the gospel, one of our leaders in the campus. Now last, I think a couple of weeks ago during Mother's Day, she invited her family here. Her mom heard the gospel and gave her life to Christ. The young person reaching out to her family. The, the, the parents reaching out to their kids. Labo labo na to. Ang goal na to. reach out. Marinig din gospel. It may be big, it may be small. There's this, uh, there's one of those students who's part of our victory group in one of the campuses that we, re- we, reaching, we are reaching out. He got shot accidentally and he was brought into a critical condition. The leaders, the campus leaders knew about this and they were very excited to help. Um, na- natulog ako, gumawa ako ng group chat. Here's a picture of the group chat. Marami pa yan, no? hindi ko na makaya lahat i-post. Natulog ako ng 11 p.m., gumising ako ng 6 a.m. Merong mga 100 plus messages sa Facebook Messenger ko. Anong ginagawa nila? Uy, may kailangan na doon ng tulong, kailangan doon ng dugo. O may dugo, kailangan walang lalagyan. O may lalagyan, walang transpo. Ah, ano gagawin natin? So parang, they were doing that exchanges. They were just helping out. It looks so small, but it wasn't small to the families who need it the most. That's significance. That's greatness. I remember also MJ, one of our students in San Juan National High School. She was reached out, I think grade 10, now she's in senior high. She grew up with a family who's poor. She, she used to think her purpose is just to graduate, and then tapos na, tumulong sa magulang ko, at yun na. But when she encountered the gospel, she knew she had a bigger significance. She had a greater destiny. Now, of course, she wants to finish. Now, she wants to help her family. But more than that, her dream is that her family will be saved. That she will reach out the campus that she is in. That she's going to change the world. In fact, just this uh, year, because of her prayers and God's goodness, she was able to baptize her cousin. Tapos sabi niya sa akin, Coach, umpisa na to. Iisa-isayin ko sila. <laughs> See that passion? That's the reason why we have our youth services. Three youth services. One here in Green Hills to reach out the private schools here. And then one in Bonnie Serrano to reach the campuses there. And another in Santa Mesa to reach the high school and colleges there. We want to make an impact. And the students... Who, uh, this, these youth services are mostly run by students. And if you are part of that, you are part of something eternal. That's what we're doing. That's the reason why even if unashamed is a little bit more expensive than the usual, it's okay. Because we're gathering 12,000 students from all around the world and we're telling them, we have a significant great God. You have a significant great mission. Therefore, let's go and make disciples. Let's change the campus and change the world. That is what we're doing. Let me end with this. You know the reason why we're so passionate about this? is because the most, the greatest, most significant person in the universe came down here on earth to love you, to save you. That's real significance. Let me ask you this. What does God need from you? May kailangan ba siya sa atin? Does he need our prayers, our money, our energy? Does he need it na pag wala yun, mawala siya? He doesn't need anything from us. But you know why you're here? Why I'm here? He wants us here. Hindi kanya kailangan, gusto kanya. At anong ginagawa niya? Minahal kanya. He loved you. What's the proof of that? Jesus Christ. 
how valuable, how significant, how great are we? The blood of His Son paid the price for our sins. We're not in our own technical term significant, but when God says you are significant, you are. And His proof, Jesus Christ, the price He paid. That's why we're going out there. That's why we're going to make an impact. That's why we're going to do great things for God. Can we bow down our heads and pray? Lord, thank you for today. Lord, I pray right now that you would speak to us. Father, I pray if some of us here, we got convicted na parang we're doing small things. I believe God is telling you, remove that. Ask big things from God. Can you pray this prayer? Can you say, God, I want to be part of something big. God, I want to be part of something big in my office. I want to be part of something big, something significant in my office, in my business. God, I want to be part of something significant in my business. In my campus, Lord, gusto ko maging significant sa campus ko. In our, ho- in our homes, God, I want to be part of something significant in my home. Can you talk to God? Wherever you are right now, medical field, business field, media field, whatever area you are, that's your mission field. And you can do great and significant things for God.